Hey there, me again. Let me ask you something. When you're shooting film, do you ever say to yourself, man, I wish this was just a little bit harder. I wish that any chance that I was gonna get usable results from this archaic medium were just that much slimmer. I wish there was something I could do to add a little bit more risk to this process and make me feel a little bit more alive. Just me? Okay, well, if you ever find yourself in a similar position where film photography is feeling a little bit stale and you want something to kind of maybe spice it up a little bit, maybe you should try pushing a roll of film. That's exactly what I did with this roll of Cinestill 800T. So before we talk about the results, let's talk about how you push film for those of you who don't know. So pushing film is essentially a process where you pretend that the film that you're using is a higher ISO than the film's box speed. So let's take this roll of Cinestill 800T that I shot for example. I wanted to do a one-stop push so that the film would be 1600 ISO. So, I basically just put 1600 as the ISO in my light meter and just shoot the film like it is a 1600 ISO film. If you just did that and nothing else, your film would be one stop underexposed and that would not look good. So in order to compensate for that, you basically have to extend your developing time and that should give you somewhat normal exposure and some slightly different effects that we'll talk about when we get to the results. So let's talk about why you might want to push a roll of film. Well, the main reason that people push film is because they have too slow of a film for the lighting conditions that they're in. And that's exactly where I found myself when Christina and I went to a jazz club in Kansas City for New Year's Eve. So the jazz club we went to is called Green Lady Lounge and it's a really, really cool spot, but it is really dark in there. A lot of the club is actually in a basement, so I was going to be shooting in very low light conditions and I didn't have a flash with me. So I needed to push this roll to 1600 ISO to get any hope of having usable images. So I was shooting with my Voigtlander 35mm f2.5 lens wide open the whole time and I was shooting at shutter speeds anywhere from 1 8th of a second to 1 half second handheld which I'm surprised I got anything usable from those settings. So most of these photos came out pretty blurry and that was to be expected. And that was kind of the idea in the first place. The jazz club we were going to is a really fun place and this is a New Year's Eve party. So I figured it might be kind of a cool look to shoot these photos like they're coming from the perspective of somebody who's maybe had a little bit too much to drink at a party. And I think a lot of those photos kind of have that feel, especially this one of the bartender pouring drinks. I did, however, somehow get a few photos that were perfectly in focus. I got this really nice portrait of Christina, and I got this photo, which is awesome. This is definitely a portfolio shot for me, and it's one of those photos that kind of has the look of sort of a Renaissance painting, which is something I'm kind of chasing in my work going forward. There's a lot going on, there's lots of nice groups of people scattered around, there's nice lights up above everyone, and these two people making out directly in the center add this really nice, sweet, calm focal point in the middle of kind of a messy composition, which I think is really, really cool. And the last photo I'll show you is a photo of a couple sitting at a table. This one is a little bit blurry too, um, but this one is it's kind of a really nice romantic looking moment. Um, the lighting definitely helps with that and the blur kind of hides the identities of these people which is kind of cool because the viewer can kind of see themselves in this picture which I think is really nice and I cropped this photo to a square just because I think it looks kind of like an album cover. And that's another thing that I want to kind of chase in my work is making photos that look sort of like album covers. So a few days after our successful New Year's Eve trip, Ethan and I took a flight to LA to do some more film photography.
I still had about two thirds of my Sinistil roll left and luckily I had my tripod this time so I could shoot a little bit more closed down f5.6, f8 like I usually do at night and I could shoot longer shutter speeds so these were 10, 20, 30 seconds sometimes. I really like how a lot of these photos turned out and definitely still just looks sort of like regular Cinestill, so I think it pushed pretty well. If you guys want to see the full video that I did about our LA trip, I will leave it up here, I think. Even after that night shoot in LA, I still didn't get the roll completely finished. I still had maybe 10 shots left and we started the next day in Chinatown. Now, this is where I will say there is kind of a drawback to pushing and pulling film, and that is that you have to shoot the whole roll that way. So, that morning, I was stuck in daylight with 1600 ISO film, so I was shooting pretty much all the way closed down, F11, F16, and I was still overexposing a bit. So, uh, yeah, the photos definitely have a unique look, and I came away with a couple that I really like. I really like this one of the lady opening up shop in Chinatown. I think that's really, really nice. And I also got a really, really cool shot of this Pacific Surfliner train platform with a train coming in on the right side of the frame. I actually barely got this shot off because the train in the foreground was actually coming into frame at full speed. So thanks to the 1600 ISO, I was shooting a very fast shutter speed. The only thing that I think would make this photo a little bit cooler is if you could see the conductor in the window of the train. So now that you've seen the photos and where I went, let's talk about how I developed the film. So I develop all of my color film myself in Cinestill CS41 Color Developer, and on their chart, they actually give you pushing and pulling directions. So to do a one-stop push, you basically need to add a minute to the three minute and 30 second developing time. So I developed my film for four and a half minutes and the results turned out pretty well, I'd say. To scan my film, I was using my Sony a7 III and a vintage Vivitar 55 millimeter macro lens. And I was using Negative Lab Pro to convert the negatives and then I did a little bit of color correcting in Lightroom afterwards. So overall, I think the results turned out pretty well. I think most of the photos were exposed correctly. None of them looked really underexposed, and the ones that did, that was probably just my mistake metering at night. And then the grain looked a little bit more pronounced overall, but not a bad look. And the grain was especially pronounced in the more shadowy areas, which is pretty normal for pushing film, I think. But I kind of like the look. I think it, it adds a nice texture to the photos. Something else I noticed was the shadows had a slight blue noise. I don't know if this is due to my scanning setup or the conversion or whatever, but it was easy enough to correct a little bit in Lightroom. But I did kind of leave it in some photos just because I liked the look, especially the ones in the Jazz Club. So overall, I think Cinestill 800T handled a one-stop push very well. Um, it's something I would be happy to do again if I needed a high ISO color film. And if that's something you're looking for, maybe give it a try. Heck, maybe now I'll try pushing it to 3200 just for a fun experiment. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.